Hey guys, uh, Brandon here. This week I'm going to be playing through La Granja No Siesta. Uh, La Granja No Siesta is the dice game. It's a roll and write game based off of the uh, Euro game La Granja, which is one of my favorite games. Uh, is No Siesta as good as La Granja? Uh, let's find out. Let's get La Granja to the table and then we'll play through it, we'll discuss it at the end, and yeah, let's do that. Alright, so here is La Grande No Siesta set up for the solo game. Uh, you take four discs of another player color. I'm going to be playing blue today. I'm using red for the, like, the neutral player that gets in the way. Uh, what you do is you place one of those four discs on top of yours on the starting space of the siesta track up here. And then the other three you can just kind of set beside the uh, market board. Uh, then what you do is you roll one die... And since it is the uh, wheat and olive, you look here in this handy dandy book. And um, you, if you roll any one of those, then you can cross off the five victory point of the topmost cart. So basically what that means is that they fulfilled that uh, market barrow. So you just kind of cross that off so that I cannot score that five point. And then you come up here and you block off that space on the market board that corresponds to that die face. So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take two of the dice, set those aside, and then you take five dice, you'll roll those, and then what you do is you pick one of these dice, uh, one of these die to uh, basically you're going to get that good. Um, to start off, I will take, well, getting more goods is probably a good thing. So I'm going to start off by taking this dice and then I pick one of those to place next to the board up here. Um, and how about I go with one of those uh, donkeys or mules. And then you take the three remaining dice, roll those. And I think for this one, I will take a donkey since I placed one up there before. And now, which one of those should I place up there? Let's go with, let's go with the money. Stick that up there, and then you roll the last dice. And since it's got both of those, and I only have one of these discs left, uh, that means you can only have four goods on your board uh, at the start of the game. Um, as you move up the siesta track, like once you get to this point, you will grab another one of these discs that's available to you. So then you can actually have five goods at a time. Uh, you get up to here, you'll get be able to get six. Get up to here, you'll be able to have seven possibly. So now I have to pick which one of those goods I want this last disc to be. And I think I'm going to go with, uh, let's go with olive just in case. Yeah, I guess I'll just do that. It's kind of arbitrary at this point. So now, now that that's all done, uh, what I do is I can basically spin these goods to then fill in spaces on this uh, player board over here, which is just a pad of two-sided uh, full, full color, which is pretty impressive for kind of these roll and write games. Um, but yeah, full color pad, double-sided, lots of them as you can see. Uh, so yeah, 
can play the game pretty infinitely. Um, so anyway, I now have to spend these to fill in uh, things on this board. And uh, if you fill in here, you'll be able to take uh, roof markers. Oh, and I forgot, at the start of the round, you're supposed to take one of these 18 uh, roof markers and place it over here. And that is now available for me to take. Uh, you set six aside out of the game at the beginning of the game. Uh, the game will last at most 18 rounds. So now I have to decide how to spend these. If I fill in, if you look here, uh, this shows that if you spend money to fill in these spaces, so if I spend a coin, which is one of the sides of the dice, and it is that side, as you can see. That was a donkey. Um, yeah, so there are basically, you have a grape on one side, money on one, and then that wheat and olive on the other. Then you also have these uh, hats, uh, pigs, and then donkeys. Those are the six sides of the dice. So if you use money to fill in spots here, then you'll be able to take one of those roof tiles that become available uh, throughout the game. Um, if, uh, and that will basically, you just, as you can see, you have to always fill in left to right on these. Notice the arrows there. Uh, so I would have to fill in that first. And by filling that in, you would get that roof tile, which has on the back side of those, they have various different things uh, that you can use throughout the game, or it could just be points, yada, yada. But you'll also get a point at the end of the game for filling in this first one, point, two points, three points, so on and so forth. So yeah, here, if you, you can use various goods to fill in these, and you can work on multiples of these at the same time. They don't have to go in order like the roofs do, but <clears throat> as you complete these, um, like let's say for instance uh, you completed this one here just to start the game uh, you'll get one of these tiles down here which will give you a special ability that you can do throughout the game this one for instance will allow you to use, to use commodities which are these this space on your uh, little player board here you can use commodities as hats commodities are basically wild goods for any of these other six goods not for hats, but if you get this special ability, then you can use them as one of the hats. This one allows you to, when you take one of these tiles, instead of just taking one and getting it, you can take two and then pick between the two. So that's what that tile will do. This one here is when you, when you fully complete all of these, so basically you have to have three goods of the same type to fill out these areas. Uh, and that gives you a commodity, and it'll also score you two points at the end of the game. But what this tile does is when you complete one of these, you get the commodity, get the two points at the end of the game, but then it also lets you take one of the basic harvest goods, which is olive, wheat, or grape, and then you can spend that to fill in another spot somewhere else. Uh, this one here is, if you look down here, these are uh, market barrows that you're trying to complete. Uh, you have to fill these in in order. It goes from left to right, which you, if you notice by these arrows here. Uh, so I'd have to have an olive first, then a wheat, then a grape, olive, wheat, grape, olive, wheat. But you also have to have a donkey filled in at some point in order to complete this market barrel. And when you complete that, you get uh, one of the commodities, then you also get to place one of your discs out here onto the market, um, which will help you for end game scoring. And that was that one there. Uh, but what this tile does means you don't have to spend donkeys in order to complete those market barrels. Uh, this one here allows you to take one of your discs on your player board and just move it to the left or right. And if you look on your player board here, there's this little line uh, that does not work. Like I couldn't turn this uh, sheep or this uh, sheep. 
<laughs> this donkey into a hat. Uh, it, and it doesn't wrap around to the other side. Uh, so that ability just allows you to do that once per round. Uh, just move a good to one of the adjacent goods. Uh, giving you a little bit of uh, just flexibility. Uh, and then this last tile is when you complete either one of these columns, which at the end of the game will score you one point. So if I uh, fill all of these in, I would get one point, but then that will also give me one dollar or one silver to then spend either up here or to fill in here, 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 so on and so forth. So yeah, those will just give you special abilities by filling in there and by describing all of those, I've kind of discussed all of the remaining spots that you can fill in. So, now back to spending those and trying to figure out the plan. And so I have an olive, a wheat, or two olives, a wheat, and a donkey. I think I like getting uh, these special abilities out of the gate because that just makes things easier in the long run. So I think what I'm going to do is just kind of spend those to fill in some of these spots. So let's use that donkey here. So I spent that. Uh, I've got the wheat, which I can put right there. So I'm almost done with that one, which will score me a point and get me one of those tiles. And then I've got two olives. So I think with one of those olives, I'll just stick that here. And then the other one will go right there. So as you can see, I'm working on three different ones. I still have two left on this one and this one, and just one left there. So now that that is done in the solo game, what you do is you come here and you look to see if either of these two dice has uh, one of the hats on it then you don't have to move the opposing player's thing forward. But since neither of those are a hat, you move that forward. And now these move up here. Take those two extra dice that we set aside at the beginning of the game, flip out another, or put out another one of those uh, roof tiles, and we're on to the second round. So roll the dice. And now I pick through these. So when you're choosing dice now, if they match either of these two dice out here, uh, you move the neutral player's token forward on the Siesta track. Um, so like if I were to take this coin, which matches the coin up here, I would have to advance his marker. So I don't think I want to do that. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these grapes to hopefully try to finish this one here. Oh, I guess I could take that coin, but the coin matches up there, so I don't think I want to do that. So I'm going to take a grape and place that there. I think I'm going to stick that coin up there again. And now roll the other three dice. And, hey, that pig, that helps me finish that one. So I'll take that pig, place that there, and that's going to go up there. And then the last die rolls. So it is a coin which matches that, but I'm not picking this. I'm just stuck taking that. So that doesn't advance his marker. So that's what I'm working with. I've got a grape, a coin, and a pig to fill in here. So I'm going to take the grape and then we'll take the pig and the coin there, completing this one, which I think for my good, I'm going to, I like the, having the flexibility to choose. So let's stick that on there, which has scored me a point at the end of the game. And now I have the ability to move 
one of my markers to the left or to the right. So their marker, we, there is no hat here, so they're going to advance again. Now these will become dice that get rolled. Those move up and we place out another roof marker. Now roll the dice. And that's what I'm working with. So I need a pig and a coin to complete those. So I might want to take those pigs, but it'd be great to move along with the hat to maybe get another one of these discs. I think I'm going to start with the hat this round so I get a hat. And then let's stick a donkey up there. I'll roll those. So now we're left with a coin, a grape, and a pig. I could take that coin, but it matches the coin up there. So instead, I think I'm going to take that pig. And we'll stick the grape up there. And then the last one is another hat. Hey, hats abound. All right, well, I'm going to spend both of those hats to just advance on this track, which is going to get me another disc to use. And then the pig I will spend to fill in this spot, which gets me another thing. And how about, hmm... How about I go with this one, because that will get me a coin each time I fill in one of these, like either one, all, one of the uh, harvest good columns or the stable columns. It would get me a coin, which I could then use to get roof tiles. So how about we go with that? So again, we're on to checking here. I spent all of my goods. He is going to advance one. Those move out, and then another roof tile comes out. So we're in the fourth round, rolling the dice. And lots of good things to choose from there. I do need another coin to fill in that, so I think I will take a coin and we'll stick a coin up there. Ooh, how about we go with the pig? If we stick a donkey up there, and then a grape. Sorry, I knocked that over. A grape was the final one. I'm going to spend the coin to fill this one in, which gets me another ability. And I think I'm going to take this one, which allows me to pick between the uh, roof tiles. So now I got a pig and a grape. And I think I want to try to start going for these markets. So I'm going to stick the grape over here. And then the pig, since I have this ability now, I'm going to stick the pig down here. All right. So again, there are no hats in there. So he is going to advance. Those come down. That goes up. And... Put out another roof tile. Roll in the dice. Ooh. Well, I definitely want a grape. So I will take grape to start working on this market. Barrow. And I don't think I want him to keep advancing, so I'm going to stick the hat up there. Roll those. Well, if I take 
either of those, he will advance again. So I think I'm going to take that, which is going to get me an olive and a wheat. And I'm going to stick the coin up there. And the last one is a pig. All right. Well, let's use that grape how I was planning to keep working on this line. And I can spin that olive to keep working on that line. And let's use our ability to move. I'm going to move this over to a donkey, which I will then spin down here, which that's going to get me a dollar because of this special ability. And that also scored me a point for the end of the game. So now I have a wheat and a dollar. Let's spin the wheat here, get, possibly get myself another ability. And then with that dollar, I'll just stick it up here on a roof to hopefully be able to start filling those in and utilizing this special ability. All right, so that's the end of that. We do have a hat in here, so he won't advance. These will come down, those go up, and a new roof tile. Now, roll the dice again. Lots of pigs, so many pigs. So that would advance him, which again, I don't wanna do. So I could get a pig to fill that in. So let's take a pig to fill in and we'll stick a dollar up there, roll those. We got some more pigs, but I also would like to get that olive. So let's take the olive and wheat. We'll stick a pig up there. And then we get a grape to fill it out. All right, so we've got an olive, wheat, grape, and a pig. I definitely want to keep going on this, so that's going to be another olive. Spend that. Now I need a coin. Which I don't have any, but I'm going to use this pig to fill this in and which one of those would i like it would be nice to not have to spend donkey so i can spend them down here so let's go with that one so now i don't have to spend donkeys over here on these market barrows and i still have a wheat and a grape well let's just try to shoot the moon and fill all of these in. So there's another grape there. And that wheat, I don't really have a spot for, so let's just stick him right up there. All right. There is not a hat there. He's gonna advance again. Those come back, those move up, and Another roof tile goes out. We're rolling dice. And what do I want now? I'm going to take one of these hats. Stick that there. I will stick one up there so he doesn't advance. We're rolling again. I could really use that coin. I'm not going to use the coin. I'm just going to take the wheat and the... Uh, olive and i guess we'll stick the pig up there so i can get a coin next round and now we've got a donkey so i've got an olive a wheat a donkey and a hat that didn't work out how i was hoping let's spin that donkey to fill this in and which one of these do I want? We'll just take this one arbitrarily. I didn't really, I don't really have a plan with that. Um, so now I have an olive, 
a wheat and a hat still. So let's spin that olive up here, fill that in. Oh, I can move this wheat over to the grape, fill that in, which is going to get me a coin. And I can spin that coin and that hat to complete both of those. So that worked out all right. So now I just need two wheat to complete this. Yeah, that's pretty good. So we've got a hat here. He's not going to advance. So those come back, go up, and another uh, roof tile. Now we're rolling dice again. Ooh, look at all that. It's a whole lot of wheat. Well, I do need to complete this, so I'm going to start off by taking one of those. And we'll stick that hat up there so he again he doesn't advance. Hey, we're going with that. Taking two more of those. And we're just going to stick another hat up there, which will then make it so that that's less things, less different types of things that I can't take next round and advance him. So we'll go with that. And then finally, a donkey. Ooh, that could be good. Yeah, I think I got a pretty good plan here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move one of these over. And I know I said I wanted to complete this, but watch and see. I'm going to move this wheat over. So now I have three olives. And then I'm going to spin those three olives to complete this uh, three olive. Uh, I think these are, what are those called again? It's like exports or something like that. Long distance trade. That's what those are called. It's long distance trade. I'm going to complete this long distance trade of olives over here, which is going to get me one of these commodities, which I can use as a wild. And I'm going to use that commodity now. Commodities you can save from round to round, but I'm going to use that commodity now as a wheat to then use those two wheats to complete this, which is going to get me seven points at the end of the game oh yeah because i do i have this ability where i don't need donkeys here so i got seven points i get another commodity for completing that and now i get to take one of my discs and place it up here and seeing as how i have five workers already i'm going to stick it on this get a point for every worker that I have at the end of the game, because that's five points that I just scored right there. And now I still have this donkey left, and I don't have a space for a donkey here, or there, or there, so I'm just gonna go ahead and spend that donkey to fill in this spot. I think I'm gonna save that commodity Mm. Or I could use it as a pig right now to then get a dollar, which I could then get a roof tile. That's not bad either. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to spend it as a pig, which will get me a dollar because of this. And now I'm going to spend that dollar to then complete this roof tile. And you basically just take two, so I'm just going to arbitrarily take the two off the end. And I take two because of uh, this tile ability, which as you can see, draw two, you discard one of them and keep one. So I have a two donkey or I could move two goods or one good twice. Uh, hmm. Having flexibility is always good, but then also having two donkeys be good but i don't have to spend donkeys here so i think this one is more beneficial for me right now so you just place that over that roof tile over that roof board and then this one is out of the game and that's the end of that round so again there are hats there so he won't advance so those come down 
move up and there's another available roof tile and rolling again now what would I like to go for well having lots of goods is always good so we'll go with that and we'll stick another hat up there Ooh. That's a tough decision. I'm going to take the grape. And we'll stick the money up there. And final one is a hat. All right, so I've got an olive, wheat, grape, and a hat. I think I'm just going to spend all three of those to fill in those three spots. And then this hat, I will just spend to advance forward to try to get myself another disc to use. And he's got one of those, so those he won't advance. Move out. Hmm. Well, I could keep working on that row or that market barrel. And let's take a coin up there again. All those. Yeah. Oh, that's tough. I'm going to take a pig. Stick that up there and get a donkey. That worked out all right. Now I can spend that olive and that wheat on there. And I'll spend the pig and donkey down here, which will get me a dollar, which I will then spend up here. Possibly getting myself another roof. And again, there is a hat there, so he won't advance. Put out another one. And we're rolling again. As you can see, this is a pretty fast game. It plays pretty quickly solo. I felt like with multiple players, it tended to get a little long because you do a dice draft, which is kind of what it's representing when you pick one and then stick one up there. So that tended to kind of slow the game down with multiple players, but for solo, it plays super quick. I want one of those grapes so I can try to complete this row. We'll stick another hat up there. Ooh, I guess I'll take another grape. I'll stick another hat up there. And then an olive and a wheat. So now I've got a grape to spend, which I complete that. And I'll spend that olive and that wheat, which completes that. So I score three points. I get another commodity. And I get to place out another disc. And since I'm doing pretty well on this track down here, the the uh, farm animals, I've already got three of those filled in. I will take that spot, which will get me, that's three points right now at the end of the game, plus three points there. So that's, yeah, that's an all right play. So now I've got another grape, which I think I'll go ahead and fill in this spot here. And I am going to save that commodity this round because I don't really have a great spot for it. Like I could stick it up here, but I, sh I can really easily get coins off of this. So I'm not going to use a, a silver up here to just do that. Okay. So again, those go away. There are, there is a hat there, so out another one and rolling well hmm. 
Hmm. I'm going to take pig. Oh, I should have spent that commodity because I only have three discs left. Oh, didn't think about that. Stick a hat there. Roll these. I'll take a coin, I guess. Stick another hat. And then this is arbitrary because I don't actually get it. Because I didn't spend... Oh my goodness. So I've got a coin, a pig, and a commodity, which is a wild good. Well, I'm going to spend the coin and the pig like that. And... I might as well spend that commodity, and I will spend it as a coin up here to finish this one. So again, I take two of these. I get to keep one. Well, those aren't super exciting. So, wow, that's really not a good thing to choose from. So I guess I'm going to take the wheat because I already have the olives here. So I'll take the wheat in case I happen to be able to finish that up there. Stick that olive out. Those come back. There were things that we won't move. Place out another one. And rolling again. I really want to get my guy moving along here. So I'm going to take this hat. Which will advance him one. I'll stick that pig up there. And we'll stick the hat up there for him. I will take those two. And again, that's arbitrary because I don't actually have the thing. So I'm going to use my movement thing. So that's going to give me a wheat. I will flip this to spend it, which gets me my third wheat. So that is three of those to complete that, which gets me a commodity. And now I'm going to spend this hat to complete this, which gets me that, which is two points. And again, another point at the end. So, And now I can spend commodity goods as hats. So I'm going to spend that to advance on the siesta track. He won't advance and put out another one. I'm going to take the donkey. We're going to stick one of those over there. I'm going to take the donkey, and we'll stick that hat up there, and I'm going to take the donkey. <laughs> so that's three donkeys, which then completes that, which gets me another commodity. Oh yeah, I'm going to spend that commodity to advance on the siesta track. Those come back, right there. And over. I'm going to take a donkey. Yes. Stick the hat up there. And I'll take the coin. Stick that up there. And another donkey. All right. So I'm going to move one of those, make it a pig, which will use both of those here, which gets me another cold coin. I'm going to spend those two coins to do that, which gets me close to completing another roof. All right, he doesn't advance. Those move up, and it goes out. So we have three rounds left. It's 
And we're going to take a pig. And we'll stick grape up there. I'm going to take another pig. We'll stick a gold co a coin up there. And the last one is a grape. So now I'm going to use this, which allows me to move two. So now I have three pigs. I will spend all three pigs to complete this one, which then gets me a commodity. And that commodity I'm going to use as a hat to advance one more, which gets me another disc to use. Whew, that was a lot of work just to get discs. I just needed that fourth one because having only three really limits you. It just makes it difficult. So there is no hat, so he will advance. And now he made it here, which shows this cart. So since he already finished that he will now finish this one and now we roll one die and it is that which he already blocked off so the hat so now he's going to block off this one so i can't use that as end game scoring and those move down, those move up, another one comes out, two rounds left. All right, I think I'm going to take the pig. I'll stick one of those up there. I'll take another pig. Nope, I'm going to take the donkey. Take a pig up there, and I also get a coin. So let's do the pig and the donkey, which then gets me another coin. I'll spend the two coins, one here and one there. I get to take two more roof tiles, coin or a point. I'm going to take the coin which I'm going to spend right away to fill in another spot. The reason I did that was because that gets me one closer, and instead of one point, I could get two points for filling in that roof. Well, he advances again. That comes back, and now this is the last round of the game. I'm going to take that pig again. I'm going to try to complete that last one. Stick a grape up there. Ooh, that's rough. Hmm. Guess I'll take that. Two goods are better than nothing. And just advancing one with the hat doesn't really do much. Stick the hat there, and final thing is a hat. That really kind of sucks. Oh no! I totally forgot that when I was completing some of those, I should have gotten extra goods because of this. Oh, I always forget something when I play games. I always forget about an ability that I gain. Alright, well... I'm going to move that pig over one to complete this roof. So I use that one ability. Take two roof tiles. Well, two dollars doesn't really do me much good. Getting to move two things also doesn't really do me much good. So I guess I'll take the two dollars. Doesn't do anything for me. He does fill in that spot so I get two points. And I'll spend both of those to just 
fill in these spots, I guess. And flip that. Two dollars. And hat will just advance me. He won't advance. So that is the end of the game. So now, in game scoring, you have this handy dandy score pad. So, what you do is you count how many roofs you have. I have, and the points are listed underneath them. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six points in roofs. And then helpers, that is one, two, three, four, five points in helpers. Long distance trade, which are things over here. I've completed one, two, three, four times two, so that's eight. Warehouse stables, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. And then market barrows. I completed seven and three, so that's 10. Siesta track. Uh, the only way you score Siesta track in the uh, solo game is you have to make it all the way to the end space. And then however many spaces ahead of the uh, neutral player you are, you would get points for that. But you will lose, I will lose one point because he's one ahead of me on the Siesta track. So that is a minus one, and then the market up here. So I'm gonna get one point for each of these. I have one, two, three, four, five, so that's five points, and then one point for each of these. So that's six, so that is a total of 11 points. So that's 11, eight, 19, 25, 35, 34, 35, 45, points at the end of the game and if you look there's this little chart for the solo game uh, 45 points means I have the potential to be a farmer am I a farmer not a farmer but the potential is there <laughs> so I kind of came in in the middle uh, so not bad uh, but that was Lagrange No Siesta. How about uh, we talk about it? All right, so that was Lagrange No Siesta. Um, it's a fun little roll and write game. Uh, does it live up to its big brother, Lagrange? I personally don't think so. Uh, it gives the feeling of Lagrange. It does, but. I prefer like the full game. Uh, this just feels like it's distilled down. Um, it's simple. It's easy. It's fun. It's a good, I would say it's a good filler, but the issue is it feels like it plays a little long with more players. I've played it with, let's see, I've played it three, two, three, and four players. Four felt really long. It felt like it took like I think it was like an hour and a half an hour something like that and for it just being a roll and write game that feels like a long time like playing it solo is great like you can get through it in like 20 minutes it's a breeze it breezes by but uh playing it with the full player count of four it's too long that's my only complaint about the game and that it's just it's not as good as the big brother uh but i'm a gigantic fan of lagranha um when this was first announced uh like right before well right before it was announced there were like mutterings that there was going to be an expansion for lagranha and that's what i thought this was going to be and i was like oh gosh I'm so excited for that. And then it turned out that it was just a, a spiritual successor in the dice game. And I was like, oh. And so I went in with some trepidation, but I still wanted to play it because I love Lagrana. Um, and it, it is a good game. It's a good game. Uh, like, I rate it pretty highly, but 
I'm, again, I'm, you can't help but compare it to LeGrand Ha, the, the full game. Um, but No Siesta does stand on its own. I feel like it's a good game. It's a good filler if you keep it lower player count. Um, that's just my personal preference, but, you know, some people might totally love the length of this game. And I would imagine, like, when I, f when I did play it with four players, uh, I had played it once at that point, um, and nobody else had played it. So maybe it was the fact that it was a bunch of new players playing it. Like, I imagine that you could probably speed it up some uh, with the full player count if everybody knew the game. Um, so I might have to try it again with, you know, some experienced players that have played it before and see if that play time can get whittled down. Uh, because for, like, I want a more robust experience if I'm playing a longer game. And while this is great for a filler, it's not what I, it's not like my go-to fare for uh, longer, for longer games. Um, but other than that, good game. I recommend it. Uh, yeah, if you're interested, check out La Gran Ha No Siesta. It's a good, good dice game. Roll and write. Check it out. All right, uh, that's it for this week. Hope you guys had fun. I'll see you next time.